welcome to the Orthodox View, where we discuss latest religious news from an Orthodox Christian perspective. I'm your host, Philip Champion. Afterlife is a fantasy. According to the famous bodybuilder, actor, and former Republican California governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. In a recent interview with his fellow actor Danny DeVito, Schwarzenegger was asked whether humanity would endure in the face of all current challenges. In response, he recalled a similar question he was once asked during an interview with the radio and television personality Howard Stern. The question was, what happens to us when we die? To which Schwarzenegger rather pessimistically responded, nothing. You are six feet under. Anyone that tells you something else is a liar. When Danny DeVito pushed back saying that we don't actually know what happens to us after death, Schwarzenegger clarified that he was referring to people and their physical bodies, not their souls. Here's what he said. We don't know what happens with a soul and all this spiritual stuff that I'm not an expert in. But I know that the body as we see each other now, we will never see each other again like that except in some fantasy. When people talk about, I will see them again in heaven, it sounds so good, but the reality is that we won't see each other again after we're gone. That's the sad part. I know people feel comfortable with death, but I don't. What can we say? Religion, almost like politics, is an area of human knowledge where everyone seems to have an opinion. But not everybody is willing to admit that they have never actually studied the subject. So it is commendable for Schwarzenegger to say that he is not an expert in spiritual or theological matters. However, as I see it, his main point is not so much about the afterlife itself, but rather about the state of physical bodies after our deaths. He believes that we won't see each other again because our bodies will stay six feet under and slowly decompose. And what are we really without our bodies? Here at the Orthodox View, we would like to try to respond to this from a Christian perspective by dividing the topic into two questions. What happens to our bodies after deaths? And what is the foundation for our faith in afterlife? On the surface, the first question seems to be simple. When we die, our souls and bodies get separated. In fact, that is what death is, the separation of a human body from a human soul. The body then begins to decompose, but what happens to the soul? According to the longer catechism of the Orthodox Church, written by St. Philaret of Moscow, the souls of the deceased righteous will be in light and rest with a foretaste of eternal happiness, whereas the souls of the wicked will be in the opposite state to the one of the righteous. But why does St. Philaret of Moscow argue that the righteous and the wicked will only experience a foretaste of eternal happiness or eternal damnation? That's because they're not yet resurrected. And as humans, we're only complete when we have both a body and a soul. That is why in the 11th article of the Nicene Creed, the Church proclaims its faith in the resurrection of the dead. Only then we shall be complete again. But what will our bodies be like on the day of the resurrection? According to St. Paul, our resurrected bodies will be like the body of the risen Christ, physical but spiritually transformed. In his exact exposition of the Orthodox faith, St. John of Damascus writes that after the Lord Jesus Christ was risen from the dead, he laid aside all his blameless, sinless passions, which he had previously voluntarily assumed in his incarnation. By sinless or natural passions, the Church Fathers mean hunger, thirst, fatigue, fear of death, etc. All those things the Lord had voluntarily, for the sake of our salvation, assumed in his incarnation and got rid of after his resurrection. So likewise, on the day of the Last Judgment, our bodies will be physical and yet transformed. We just need to wait for the resurrection of the dead. Now, back to the second part. What is the foundation for our faith in afterlife? There are, of course, numerous answers to this question that have been given by various Christian theologians and thinkers 
throughout the two millennia. But I would like to provide just one main reason for it, and that is the resurrection of Christ. Even the skeptics among modern biblical scholars would agree that the events that took place on the third day after the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth had shaken the world forever. The supernatural experience of the apostles had motivated them to travel to all four corners of the world in order to preach the gospel. That is when Christianity really started. As Christians, we know that that supernatural experience was authentic, for it was based on the reality of the physical resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is because Jesus' tomb was empty and he had risen that we firmly believe in afterlife. To paraphrase St. Paul, if it is preached that Christ is risen, how can some of us say that there is no resurrection of the dead? So that is our answer to Arnold Schwarzenegger. That is how we can know that the belief in afterlife is not a simple fantasy. In the description to this video, we shall share several relevant materials on this matter. Please make sure to check them out. The Kyiv Caves Lavra National Reserve, the state organization under the Ukrainian Ministry of Culture that controls the monastery from a legal point of view, has given the monastic brotherhood and the Ukrainian Orthodox Church three days to vacate the monastery. The Lavra had become a state-operated museum in Soviet times, which has continued under the Ukrainian state. The Ukrainian Minister of Culture, Mr. Alexander Tkachenko, published the relevant order two days ago. According to the minister, if the Ukrainian church does not leave the territory of its own monastery by the end of the week, I quote, a court case will be held to make an appropriate decision to remove obstacles to the reserve's use of the property. The news website Ortho Christian recalls that the Ukrainian Orthodox Church was initially ordered to vacate the monastery by March 29th, but the monks stood strong and thousands of faithful came out to protect their holy site. And so Orthodox Divine Services continue in the monastery more than two months later. Let us all continue to pray for the long-suffering Ukrainian Orthodox Church, for its first hierarch, Metropolitan Anufri of Kiev and all Ukraine, for the monastic brotherhood of the Kiev Pechersk Labra and other Ukrainian Orthodox monasteries, and, of course, for peace in the region and in the whole world. Martin Scorsese is planning to make yet another movie about the life of Jesus. The famous director has recently made a visit to Italy, where he attended a series of religious and cinematic events. Speaking at a conference at the Vatican, Scorsese said the following, I have responded to the Pope's appeal to artists in the only way I know how, by imagining and writing a screenplay for a film about Jesus. And I'm about to start making it. However, there is no further information on the project other than that the director had already provided. At the conference, Scorsese had also spoken about his passion for Pier Paolo Pasolini's The Gospel According to St. Matthew, and discussed his own works, including the notorious The Last Temptation of Christ. In 1988, that movie angered many conservative Christians for its depiction of somewhat Nestorian Jesus, who was presented not so much as God incarnate, but rather as a human person with some vague connections with the divine. The movie was an adaptation of the controversial novel of the same name written by Nikos Kazantzakis in 1955. Scorsese also spoke about his movie called The Silence, which tells the story of two Jesuit missionaries in the 17th century Japan, in the midst of anti-Christian persecution. In 2016, he screened the silence in Rome and had a first meeting with Pope Francis, who himself joined the Jesuits in the hope of becoming a missionary in Japan. Personally, I believe that Martin Scorsese is one of the most talented directors in Hollywood. So one can only hope that his next film about Christ will be more faithful to the real person of Jesus of Nazareth as he is presented in the Gospels. 
The people of South Korea are now able to read about the history of the Orthodox Church in their country in their mother tongue. According to the official website of the diocese, the Orthodox Press of the Korean Diocese of the Russian Orthodox Church had recently published a new book written by His Eminence Archbishop Theophan of Korea that is called The Missionary Activity of the Russian Orthodox Church Among Koreans. It focuses on the activities of the Russian ecclesiastical mission in Korea in the first half of the 20th century. The news website OrthoChristian provides the following description of the book translated from the information on the diocesan website. Here's what it says. The book tells about the difficult twists and turns in the work of the spiritual mission in Korea, which from the very beginning of its existence has faced many difficulties associated with the changing political situation in both Russia and Korea. Tragic events in the history of the two countries, such as the Russo-Japanese War of 1904-1905, the annexation of Korea by Japan in 1910, the revolution in Russia in 1917, as well as the division of Korea into North and South after the Second World War, followed by the Civil War on the Korean Peninsula in 1950-1953, affected the life of the ecclesiastical mission in Korea in one way or another, and eventually led to the fact that its work was discontinued. The book also includes an article by Bishop Inakinsi of Usuri about the history of the spread of orthodoxy among Koreans of the Usuri region since the mid-19th century. According to the diocesan website, both parts of the book testify that orthodoxy is not a religion alien to the Korean consciousness, but a faith with which Koreans have been familiar for a very long time. Meanwhile, that's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time on the Orthodox View.